What is going on guys and girls? My name is James and welcome back today to Roblox. How are we doing everyone? Welcome back, welcome back. Today we are jumping back into the Bee Swarm Simulator test realm because as we kind of expected, the brand new and third Elite Collector has just been dropped for testing. And this thing also, as with the other two, looks insane. So today we're going to check it out. We're going to see all the new abilities. We're going to mess about with it. I've got a few other bits of information too. And it should be a good time. Should we, uh, should, should we do the thing? Let's do the thing. Okie dokie, he's three, two, one. Claim the hive. Uh, yeah. Welcome back, everyone, once again. Hopefully, you guys and girls are doing amazing today. Of course. <laughs> so, after, like, sort of the past few episodes has been kind of crazy. So, on it has been testing the new collectors. So, so far, up until this point, we have the Gummy Baller, which is the one which is based all around goo and goo conversion and all that kind of thing. And then last episode, we checked out the brand new Dark Scythe, which is this massive... <laughs> massive looking collector with the crazy particle effects it works all with the fire and the heat and everything really really cool well today is the time for the blue collector and this one also looks mad Woo! let's go dudes look at this madness um <laughs> so i just checked the previous episode i think we set a light goal of like 3000 in that one we actually are currently sitting on 4500 which is i think you consider that a, a pretty good smashing of the old goal there Thank you very, very much. Um, I don't know. Should we try and push it a little bit? Can we try and go for another 4,000? I think that's like the highest one that we've done so far in this like Beesmus sort of season. Uh, but yeah, just once again, thank you so much for joining and uh, coming and hanging out with me. I really hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I'm really enjoying making them, showing you guys all this cool stuff. And yeah, as I kind of mentioned, like over the next month or so with all this Beesmus, bear in mind, don't forget, Beesmus is going to be part one and two, same like last year. So we're going to have the first part over Christmas and then the second part after. After. It's going to be months of quality bee swarm shenanigans, and everyone is invited. It's going to be good. Okay, so for now, uh, we're going to wave goodbye here to the dark side. What is this egg? Ah, nectar testers. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention there's like a bunch of bee quippy things here that on it just put into the test realm. You've got like the bee quip cases and stuff. Uh, of course, bee quips are going to be returning in the beastless update and all that kind of jazz, so. You can kind of like test them in the test realm and stuff. But in terms of the new collector, it is a blue one. We now have three shiny boxes. Look at this. Gummy baller. Done. This bad boy. Dark scythe. Done. The brand new one is called the Tide Popper. Look at it. It's a spear. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's called the Tide Popper. It looks like, you, have you ever seen like horse jousting? Um, where like it's a medieval thing and they have like the two horses with the big jousty jousts. It looks like a, is it supposed to look like an icicle? Or is it like a, a medieval horse jouster? Either way, it looks cool. Look at it. Although actually looking at it, is it supposed to be an icicle? <laughs> I don't know. Either way, it's massive and it's actually really cool because you've got like the bubble particle effects coming off the top. So to be honest, this was a little bit of a surprise for like seeing this because I was kind of thinking that it would be like a crazy version of an actual bubble blower. Of course, you know, Blue HQ, you have the bubble blower on the very top and then the scythes, you know, the scythe is basically a cooler version of the original scythe. Um, so I thought it was going to be some crazy bubble blower, but no. On it's done a madness once again. Look at this shiny boy. Right, so we're going to have some fun with this. Um, <laughs> the ability sounds absolutely insane. Like, this is the first time that we're trying this out here in the test realm. Uh, the ability looks mad. But yeah, I'm going to break this down into two parts here. So the first part says... Okay, I'm testing the blue collector, the Tide Popper. It's a tool that spawns waves that travel far and pop bubbles. As you pop bubbles, the tool gets faster and the waves get bigger. Every once in a while, it starts spawning huge waves that can hit balloons to grant you buffs. The numbers are placeholders at the moment as it's hard to balance, but we can see if the mechanics are working. I expect it to be pretty buggy. So I do have a detailed description uh, next as to what we can actually like do with this bad boy. On it here says, detailed description. Every third swing releases a wave of water that collects pollen, pops bubbles, and converts a little pollen per bee hit. So you actually physically hit the bees in your field, and then it also triggers that as well. Um, yeah, and it causes frogs to jump away. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. When one of your bubbles is popped by any means, it grants you a stack of tied power. And it also gives you two stacks if the bubble is gold, which causes you to swing the tool a little bit faster. At 500 stacks, your tied power is replaced with a tidal surge, which lasts for 10 seconds and grants you two, two times tool swing speed and makes every swing release a large tidal wave for... <laughs> for, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm supposed to write some seconds there or something? Anyway, uh, whenever a tidal wave hits a balloon, it causes the balloon to convert up to 3% of your total convert in your honey tokens, uh, into honey tokens, sorry, and grants you three seconds of the tide blessing. Six seconds if the balloon is gold. Okay, tide blessing stacks up to four hours and grants you a one time, uh, 1 1.1 1 .1 blue pollen, honey from tokens, convert rate of hive, boost, and pollen from bees, and pollen from tools. Popping a bubble during tidal surge causes the surge to last a little bit longer. Whoo! All right, so this is, um, this is an interesting one. So this one is all to do with not only popping bubbles uh, and also getting the tidal wave and the tidal surge boost, but this also is to do with how fast you swing the weapon and it gives you a swing speed boost, <laughs> which is kind of mad. So, what I think we should do is uh, transform our hive. So, already I'm thinking loads of buoyant bees, loads of tadpole bees, let's get loads of bubbles, you know, let's get loads of balloons in the fields, uh, let's get lots of blue stuff, basically. Now, of course, in the last video, you saw that on it in the test realm, basically just dropped 10,000 of every single egg. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be honest with you, does make building hives a lot easier. So let's not go too crazy. Let's just get like a bunch of random stuff here to do with it. Can't find any of it in the list. Come on. Where are you? Come, where are you? Hey, Tadpole Bee. Yes. Okay, so we're going to replace all of the, uh, the, the red bees pretty much that we had in the previous episode. Let's swap red for blue, and I'll see you guys in a sec. Right, okay, so, uh, what I've done is, I, I don't know, it's, it's <laughs> maybe slightly too many, maybe not enough, I don't know, I've gone for 16 tadpoles and 10 buoyant bees, let's make all of those guys gifted, boom, uh, right, so, let's jump into a field, which field shall we pick, let's just, uh, no, no, let's maybe just go for this one for now, so what we're trying to do here is every three swings, oh, look at the collection pattern, Woo! yo, look at this, hang on, let me, let me zoom out, <laughs> So yeah, every three swipes, basically what's happening is I'm actually firing a wave of water from the front of the collector. So this little tidal wave thing is going to get bigger, obviously, depending on how much we stack. And then what we need to do is we essentially need to use that collector and use our water to start hitting as many bubbles as possible. So right now, obviously, we're not doing very much. I just kind of wanted to show you what pattern it collects in and what it looks like at the very basic. Let's charge this up a bit and let's see what happens. Let me get a bunch of frogs and stuff in the field. So as well as on it just said there, every third swing as well, uh, if the water hits the bees, it also adds like a little bit of, um, I think it's conversion is what he said adds a little bit of pollen what is that pollen per sorry converts a little pollen per bee hit so you know you can actually hit your bees with it but it's quite a thin thing so it's not exactly going to hit every single one of them every single time but what we need to do here is we need to actually just start trying to hit some bubbles let me see if i can get a bunch of frogs in here i'm gonna have my gifted frogs as well so our bubbles can be gold uh, which means we should be stacking up the boost like two times quicker I think is what it said. Um, all right, let me, let me, let me, let me see what we can do here. Okay, here you go, look. So my tide power is now generating. So my tide power is going up, which means my collector tool speed is going up. And basically what we need to do is we need to get that up to 500. That's the golden number when it comes to this collector. I'm wondering like, if we run into bubbles with the collector, does that count as well? I think it does. So, oh, <laughs> I've got the wrong Supreme Amulet on, but uh, yeah, it seems like as well as actually hitting it with your wand, you can actually run into the bubbles, and that also counts towards your stack, and obviously the gold bubbles are going to be better as well. So we're currently up to 300. Is our wave getting any bigger yet? It is! Very difficult to see with the chaos in the fields, but I think our wave is getting slightly bigger. Let's see if we can get that tidal wave. 200 more to go. We're getting close now, nearly at 450. So I, I, it's actually quite chaotic in the fields. It's actually quite difficult to see the tidal wave. It is definitely getting a lot bigger though. Let's see this tidal surge. So I'm gonna try and stand in this side of the field. Okay, here we go, here we go. It's coming, it's coming. Ready, ready, ready. We missed it. <laughs> oh, there it is, look, 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 look. Yo, we can spam it. 
Dude, look at the size of that bad boys. Hang on, wait, let me try and zoom out. Interesting, okay. So I think it's now just run out. Um, but there we go. We actually triggered our first ever Tidal Blessing. So this is going to last up to four hours based off, you know, how much you play for. Uh, and that is giving us the blue boost. It's giving us the honey from tokens, the honey at hive, the pollen from bees, and the pollen from tools. Uh, and we do also now have to start collecting from the beginning. So I want to see that again. So... Yeah, what's going to happen is, once again, when we get to that magic 500 number, we're going to have 10 seconds of tidal surge, and we're going to try and hit all of the balloons. So I'm going to stand right on the edge of this field here. It's very chaotic there. Right, right, see if we can hit the balloons. Hit the balloons, hit the balloons, hit the balloons. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Is it causing them to fly away? I can't tell. <laughs> it's mad. <laughs> Look at this. So it lasts for 10 seconds, the tidal surge, but to be honest with you, if you've got enough, like, tadpole bees and stuff, it charges up really quickly. Like, obviously this is the test realm, so you can kind of exaggerate things a little bit. It doesn't take that long, especially with the gifted ones. So yeah, based off what Honor has said here, essentially, you use the collector to farm the bubbles in the field, uh, and then that does a bunch of stuff as well with the waves when you hit the bees and all that kind of stuff. Then once you have that tidal surge ability, you use that to then essentially charge your balloons. So it very, very much works hand in hand with bubbles and balloons. I think it's probably going to be the go-to collector for anyone who's going to try and do like a hard blue hive. Um, I like it. It's uh. <laughs> It's definitely the most, like, chaotic in the field. That's what I would say. Like, especially with the new balloon mechanic, there's a lot happening in the field. Um, I like it, though. I like it. It's cool. It's cool. It's unique as well. I feel that's one cool thing about all these new collectors. They're not just necessarily a collector that just does a different pattern. The first time we saw this, I think, was with the, um, uh, the spirit petal. You know, when you actually fired the petals out. Um, but now, each one of these has its own brand new set of abilities, so it's very much like a top high tier collection system with your collectors that will benefit what kind of hide and build you're actually running. Nice. Okay, here we go, and one more time, just to kind of show you guys the waves from the sides. There you go, look at that. <laughs> they're really big, like they're actually really, really big. So obviously what you want to do here is you want to make them uh, have contact with your balloons. Um, look at that. Wow. Actually, you know what? The effect that on is used there for like the waves looks really good. Only lasts 10 seconds. And there you go. Then we have to start collecting all the way from the beginning. But of course, every single time you do that, we are building and we are generating up our tide blessings. So every single time we do that over and over and over, you're going to be building up this boost longer and longer and longer. So if you're someone that comes and does like big long play sessions, I think this is going to be really, really good for, um, I don't know, there's like obviously like the AFK grinders. Uh, maybe this is going to be useful. I'm not too sure. I'm not an AFK grinder myself. Um, but I think, you know, if you're especially going to have like those long play sessions, uh, building up a boost is always good. You're going to have the nectar as well from the pots, all that kind of stuff. It's all going to work together. Nice. Brand new collector, lads. So, uh, yeah, in terms of the collector, I think that's pretty much everything that we have really to see here. Um, I'm sure you guys could already sort of work out what benefits it's going to be with the different B combinations and stuff. But obviously, it's the test realm. So right now, these weapons have literally just been added. Uh, and then as on it mentioned, which I think we talked about last episode, uh, the whole thing is going to be like reset. And then there's going to be like a competition. So it's going to be red, white and blue. Uh, and I would imagine that you have to pick a collector for each one. And then on it's going to do a competition to see which people are like making the most with those collectors and bees and stuff uh, and then he can start balancing those from that data which i think is kind of useful um but yeah if you're not quite up to the stage yet where you will be able to use these uh, on it does say here that the spark staff is actually buffed in the test realm already along with the golden rake porcelain dipper and petal wand uh, i raised them all up after adding the bubbles and flames to the bubble wands inside so there has been some rebalancing to the to the sort of earlier collectors i guess so you will be able to use those a little bit more efficiently uh, I think he also said one more thing here. Uh, oh, yeah, this is cool. So uh, I don't think I said this yet because this wasn't like available information last episode. But the scythe, the dark scythe, will 100% damage enemies by the time it's released. So that's not meaning it's a one hit kill. That means that on its plan is to actually have the dark scythe do damage to mobs in the field which I don't think we've ever had before. Like, you've never been able to directly damage any mobs in the game. It's always been your bees, and you've just had to, like, run around and try not to get hit. But the dark side does allow you to do damage. So once again, that's going to be amazing for the Mondo Chick, for uh, Coconut Crab, for, you know, a uh, Stump Snail as well. If you can get the Stump Snail down quicker, that would be insane. And it's going to do damage. Wow. I think that also kind of like furthers the um, 
the appeal of, of the red side of things. Obviously, you know, anytime anyone wants to go and do anything like stick bug or whatever, oh, it's going to be amazing for stick bug because it sweeps. <gasps> wow. But yeah, everyone always goes for the red, obviously, because it has the damage boosters. But people are going to want to use the red weapon as well if it's going to do damage to stuff in the field. So I, I would imagine that we're probably going to unlock all three of these in the main game. Um, but you can pick and choose to use them when you want. Nice. And I also think it's kind of cool as well because it still means that even if you do have a blue hive or a white hive or whatever, you're still, you know, going to want to be using the, the red side and stuff and, you know, the helmet for, um, you know, still like stick bug and all that kind of thing. So it still does keep that relevant and useful, even if it's not the hive that you've picked. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I think for this episode, that's probably about everything for like the sort of brand new information. But essentially, just to kind of recap, what's going to happen is that Honor has been working uh, mostly over the past week or so on all of this end game stuff. So we've had all the new collectors and stuff. He's mentioned the, the brand new sprinklers with their own abilities, brand new backpacks, all that kind of thing. So I imagine we'll see those in here pretty soon. And then... After all that's finished and tied off, especially with all the new bees, he's going to then start focusing more on the beesmas content. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like how it's working right now. He's trying to do all of the endgame stuff first, uh, and then we'll get to the other stuff, I'm sure, pretty soon. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's going to be about it for this one. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. And until then, thanks, and see ya.